This is a follow-up to the easy-to-build desktop 3-axis CNC milling machine once you get the machine all put together it's time to make it go. So it's time to drive the motors. And here I've put together a circuit that I think is the absolute cheapest and easiest way to control stepper motors with step and direction signals. It works with many of the free or low-cost softwares that produce step and direction signals through the parallel printer port. I'll explain how it works but for those of you who just want to get on with it. The underscore next underscore step, but I would suggest for those of you who are unfamiliar with circuits to do it on a breadboard, see pictures. This way you can easily correct any mistakes and try different things. This schematic is just to control one motor so for the milling machine you need three of these circuits and three motors. From left to right and top to bottom. I try to draw schematics so that positive voltages are toward the top and ground or negative voltages toward the bottom. Inputs are to the left and outputs to the right. First off the voltage that you are going to use to run the motor needs to be stepped down and regulated for the logic chips. I used a 6.2 volt Zener to do this because it's low in order for the logic chips to receive the signals from your printer port and high enough for the outputs to drive many of the standard power fits so you may not have to use logic fits like the schematic shows. So the resistor R1 drops the voltage, the Zener diode regulates it to 6.2 volts and the capacitor C1 filters out any noise from the motor, and this voltage powers the two ICs. The first IC, CD4516, is called an up, down counter. One signal from the printer port will tell the counter if it will count up or down and the other signal, called step will increment or decrement the counter by one count. Now we're only going to use two outputs from the counter Q1 and Q2. With this binary counting method there are only four combinations of output from the counter, 00, 01, 10, and 11. These lines are fed to the A and B inputs of the other IC, CD4028, which decodes these combinations to four separate outputs. I did a trick here using the C input to work as an enable input. If the enable optional is connected to the parallel port and the computer tells it to shut off all of the outputs to the fits will go low off. So the four outputs of the decoder drive the fit transistors and the fits drive the four poles of the motor. Now everybody wants to know what the light bulb is for. It's not so much whether you use a bulb or a resistor, it's that a bulb comes with a socket. You can get these wedge base light bulbs from 1 watt to 20 watts. Start with maybe a 4 watt bulb and if you find you need a little more beef you just pull it out and put in a 10 watt bulb. It's really handy. And I found it's good to have some voltage drop there as kind of a ballast for the motor windings. The diodes catch some of the current that comes out of the motor each time the fit transistors turn off. The diode feeds this current back to the supply. When you get the circuit up and running find a power supply that puts out more voltage than you really need and then change out light bulbs till you get it running smoothly. Some of my stepper motors are 5 or 6 volt and some are 12 volt but it all works out.